someone on the way. They're not gonna let us leave. Hi, uh, Gabriel and Reese. how are you doing? Good, you? Great, how are you? Not too bad. Yeah, nice to, uh, nice to uh, see you both in person. Yeah, yes. still kidding. <laughs> So how are you doing? Congratulations on the movie. It's fantastic. I was watching it again yesterday. I loved it. Uh, it's great. Um, especially considering how many problems you had with the whole thing, not to get it uh, done, because I, I know that you, you got lucky with the, the actual house itself, but you had, yeah, I think you ran into all kinds of problems. Can you tell oh, us a little yeah. about all that? The technical stuff that kind of, without having that, don't go into too much, because I think you went into all kinds of problems, no? But uh, I was reading about yeah, kind of lots of blood seeped into the basement and things like that. <laughs> yeah, where, where do we even start? I felt like, you know, the problems they had in Apocalypse Now, I feel like this is a micro fragment of like, <laughs> micro let's just put problems in one location in a house, like the plumbing linking with poop and urine coming out of the pipes onto <laughs> our set, blood dripping all over the cinematographers and camera department's gear in the basement. Like, what else was there, Reese? The do ghost I mean, that haunted the place? The ghost that place. haunted the place? I think, I mean, we were fraught with issues right from the beginning, man. I, the the problem was is that we were supposed to be building it as a set. Um, and we were very close. We had a location we were going to build in. Uh, but then we lost our production designer. And then Gabe and I took over. And it was just, it was a mad rush. Luckily, I had a couple contracting buddies who had a house that they were going to demolish in a couple months. And they said, well, here, use it and do whatever you want with it. But it gave us very little time. And it's just it took the focus off of the actual filmmaking for us and it became, well, we've got to get this house ready. But then it's like, as soon as the house was ready, we were immediately shooting and it was just every day was chaos management and um, a little bit of directing. So, yeah. <laughs> so like Dave said, it was like every single day there was something like the plumbing went and then the blood leaked through the gear and then the house was haunted. And it's just like, and not to mention all the stuff we breathed in from that house from destroying the walls and ripping up carpets. It was, uh, it didn't, it did not stop for that entire shoot. We did but, not get a break. But all of that pressure must have kind of really helped you. I mean, it definitely felt like it really kind of upped the ante for, you know, to, to get the film. I mean, it feels really frenetic, no? Was that because of that as well? It helped build up that kind of feeling throughout the, the film? Yeah, I was just going to, that's what I was to say. It, it, it probably helped a bit where, versus if we had a, you know, like we were saying, we, we were going to have a sound stage with, you know, we had a, a, a totally different house in our in our mind that was going to be built, you know, with removal walls and removal wall ceilings and stuff to get our camera angles. But this really forced us to, to get nasty uh, in, in this house. And I don't think at the end of the day, it would have turned out as kind of like rough and gritty as it would have been if it was, you know, oh, like, you don't know, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I mean, <laughs> obviously no, and the same for the actors as well. I mean, I know that you, you've worked with most of the actors beforehand. Did they, not, did they know what they were going to get into? Were they were going to get down on gritty and kind of do all pretty much all the violence that we see on screen. Them yeah. Laura is like a trooper. Yeah. She's, she's Laura Burke is amazing. Like she, she may have not known, but she, she did not look like, you know, it was, uh, Nick, I think was surprised with how crazy it was going to be because on set you would see him and he's like this is pretty crazy right like this is cr this is crazy like, this is crazy Nick. this is crazy um so i think i think we all knew and i think the actors knew by reading the last you know act of the script that what they were in for was going to be physically demanding so um i know like there was no one no one was really complaining everyone knew right. that they were going to get bruised and um, oh, that, that, first, that, that opening scene wasn't him just after reading this the script and seeing what he had to do no <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yes we did tell them beforehand like we, yeah. we sat down about two weeks beforehand when we did our first and only script read through and we explained to them very carefully that you have to know what we're getting into this is not going to be a glamorous shoot like this is going to be all hands on deck and we really need you guys to be there along with us and the only way this is going to work is if you join us for the ride and go the full mile i do think that tension you feel between those three is very real in some of those scenes Oh, that's yeah. that's that's not acting especially those ki those kitchen sequences like those were just really long days and really long takes of yeah. this, those guys just living and breathing that environment uh -huh. and i mean obviously they're doing those action scenes in such a, a claustrophobic environment must have been crazy as well i mean we've seen films like the raid and stuff like that but i think even they had 
a lot more space than you did to to pull it off no yes <laughs> yeah we yeah we just had to make sure everything was you could destroy and i mean that's a testament to our stunt coordinators and stunt team they're, they're amazing like they they kind of went in and, and made it their own as well right um that's what they're trained to do that's what that's why they're professionals um so they work really well with the tights to tight spaces um the house was just so abnormally small like i still don't know why it was so small i mean I guess that's just the age of it but like even the hallway um was so small and nick uh smith the actor who plays chris he's such a tall guy and it was it was always challenging to for a camera department for eye lines and stuff to like he is tall like how how tall would you say six five yeah he's a big he's a big boy he's, a big he's boy. and laura is short so it was yeah. always a struggle to kind of not make him look so tall and and when especially in a, in a small space so that was another challenge but it helps though because those fights to us in prep like they weren't supposed to feel like the rate and the rate is amazing don't get yeah. me wrong but like this was supposed to feel unchoreographed very intense like we wanted it to feel like we walked into a bar and we were capturing a bar brawl like these yeah. are people that were just being like bodies thrown together smash they don't know they're not hitting the right stuff you know like it's just it was complete chaos and cacophony so <laughs> What about the the actual kind of the villains? I know that I think you brought quite a, a team of, of actual bikers now in on the scene. Yeah, the um there's there's three guys. So we had like our big bike night and whatnot. Um and then a few of those guys are, are friends of ours who are in a bike club. So you know, word of mouth comes out for the night to get everyone together. And then, then again, you know, they're wearing camouflage pants and helmets because the guys who showed up to the house were like our buddies who had bikes and then um the stunt team would just get swap out and get their clothes on um you know so it was um it was just another 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 device right uh that we had to use um i know reese even had to wear the bike did you have to wear a helmet at all reese uh no i like, avoided the helmet you avoid that i had to wear I, I was in the mask you were in the helmet a couple times i did oh, the mask. and especially during the the bathroom fight scene the whole fight scene takes place but then for timing, you know the the throat slit scene in the bathtub. Yeah, That's yeah, me it. getting my throat slit. Oh really? But TJ was the one who was fighting. So while yes. I was in the chair getting the makeup on my neck, they were up filming. TJ was filming, and then we would just time, it, and then I would sub up, get that last shot because that app, that appliance, took hours to put on. Yes. We just didn't have that time, and you know you can't pay just another dude. Yeah just to go do it. So I was like, well, there's two of us directors. This is, this is handy when there's two directors. Like I could just go, <laughs> go in the chair and then Reese can go put that mask on and we can shoot him getting shot in the arm. So Reese is actually the guy at the back door who gets shot in the, in the arm and yeah. run and falls down the stairs. Yeah. Um, I, that was and, actually... I get, and I get shoved against the wall and shot in the face in the bathroom too. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot of, um, it, it was more the nature of our budget and our time where it's like, we just have to have, Cause you know, we only have four to five guys and they're rotating every week. So you couldn't have them without the mask. It just wouldn't work. And there's just and, no space. And there's no space. And frankly, it's just, it's more intimidating with the masks. Like when you take the eyes out of the equation, then it's just this faceless monster and it's terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's I was, shocking I was, on. It was one of my, that was one of my next questions is, I mean, the, the mask that we got in there behind me, the main, the masks, intimidating but i found the kind of the helmet for some reason was even more intimidating i'm not sure why i mean how did you de design that <laughs> we was put that the masks together in my basement <laughs> yeah six hours before shootings <laughs> those white helmets were product of facebook marketplace and kijiji and uh, you know i think we got those helmets a year before we started shooting because we knew that they a year before we started shooting we knew what the bad guys were so I remember bu buying those helmets off Facebook Marketplace for 10 bucks, 15 bucks a pop, but it, to make them all unison and to give the film kind of some kind of like, um, it's always interesting, like, who, who are these guys? Yeah. They're not just dudes, they're all their helmets are matching. They're all wearing camel jackets. They have patches on the back, like creating a little bit of a world, you know, that this, this yeah. exists in. Um, and originally those, those helmets were just going to be white. 
with 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 their clear visors but then you could see their eyes a little too much um and because we had to swap actors out inside the helmets you would see that it's a different guy so we had to get them tinted red um and that was a, a whole other thing too because that red tint you could not see out of see it what you're doing oh yeah it was so blurry and they don't even make i don't even like oh it because and it was budget too. It was just a, like a plastic wrap that went on the inside. Um, you can't even buy, like you can buy them, but they cost so much money, right? They cost like, but then at the end of the day, it actually would have probably ended up cheaper to buy the visors um, in yeah. the budget. So. Well, and it was also the night before we started shooting, they had done a test shoot with the helmets. They were like astronauts. We, remember we sent it to the producers and they hated it. So, they, they were like, it looks like astronauts. The Flight Science of Furious 9 trailer, no? Yeah, so, <laughs> so Gabe, Gabe came over and we, we literally sat in my basement and like just painted and drew and scratched them up and took photos and went, well, I hope you guys like these better because this is what we're shooting with, so. Uh -huh. I mean, we're running out of time, so I, I, I want to speak to you, Gabriel, about you. You wrote the score as well, which you haven't, you had, I don't think you've done that for a little while, no? Was that always intentional for you to write the score for this one? Uh, originally, we weren't going to have any score for this right. um, and just leave it, you know, a, a silent film in a sense with no score. And then uh, Reese had confidence in me um, and I was tinkering away with stuff like a year prior. So I had a, a sound bank of stuff produced and then, you know, Reese is a fantastic editor. So while he was editing, he would send me scenes and I would kind of just play with it and put it in and it, and it, just, all, it just all worked. There's a movie called Up, Upgrade, the movie Upgrade. Right, yeah. I really like the sound in that movie. There's something about that score and sound that's phenomenal, especially with the action scenes. I remember watching the trailers for that and using that a little bit of like uh, inspiration. Like it's the sound design in that is just very different from what I've noticed. Because that's a horror movie, but it's not really a horror movie. It is, but yeah, it's no, not. It's, yeah, of... it's not dissimilar to what you've made. Yeah, it's, it's got kind of like the action in there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And just to finish off then, I mean, you've made this this film together, the two of you. Will you be uh, working together? again or is that a you've had enough of each other no <laughs> we 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 always work together you know yeah reese was in if a tree falls and we're Are both you, in each you, other's you, films you that's right yeah like it's you know so we always work together you know like we have our uh separate movies right now that are in the works uh, but i'm involved in helping his he's involved in helping mine producing mine so uh, we're always going to be involved you know we're, we probably will make something together one day but it's just like yeah, it was just kind of this one thing that we decided to come do together and see what yeah. happens. We still love each other. We talk to each other every day. It's nothing <laughs> happened, which was great. In fact, it probably made us even more closer, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that's his side of the story. <laughs> and just one final question. I, um, a friend of mine called Chad Archibald told me to ask about um, a Dungeons and Dragons character. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. my leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right now, I am a fourth level uh, uh, Goliath Paladin. Um, uh, neutral Chaos. Uh, his name is Rock. Um, we are currently doing the Ice Wind Dale campaign. Um, it is fantastic for all uh, Dungeons and Dragons freaks out there. It's it's an amazing campaign, and our DM uh, is, is amazing. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm in a big Goliath Paladin kick right now. Um, my my god is Tempest, the god of war, who I worship. Brilliant. Well, so that's the perfect place to end the interview, I think, before we go anywhere else. So it's really good to finally speak to you face to face. Hopefully, next time we can speak to each other at a festival or something. Yeah, that's what I miss. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Miss, we're really missing that aspect with this film. But uh, best of luck with it. I'm sure it's going to go down really well. And I hope to speak to you about something in the future. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Good to see you Thanks, guys. Howard. Oh, my God.